you are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Welcome to this special production of GMTV from the studio at Houston High School. I'm Sharon Goldsworthy, Mayor of Germantown for the past 20 years. As I leave office, I truly appreciate GMTV's very thoughtful invitation to me to share my impressions and reflections. This trip down memory lane could not be made without the person who has so capably performed the professional responsibilities of city administrator, while I, as mayor, tended mostly to the public and political side. Joining me is Patrick Lawton with the city of Germantown for 26 years and serving as city administrator for 24 years. Let's begin, Patrick, with a quick glimpse at 1994. I was serving as an alderman, having been elected in 1992. That board, the Board of Mayor and Aldermen, and the city faced a lot in 94, including a couple natural disasters. It was a boom year in development and the city also undertook several major projects. I, I tell folks when we reflect back on 94 um, that it was the best of times and it was the worst of times because we started 94 with the ice storm and it was just devastating for our city. But, but one of the things that Driven Town has had a strong reputation for, there's not much we can do about preventing those type of disasters from happening, but it's what we did after that and immediately began the cleanup effort and restoring power back to our residents. And then we closed with another disaster at the end of 94, and that was in November with the, with the, the unfortunate tornado that came through and, and wreaked havoc, havoc in our community. But there were a lot of amazing things that also began to take shape. Mayor, and I'll give you a lot of credit with your leadership coming in and understanding the changes that our community was, was facing and how we needed to do the kind of long range planning efforts if we were going to and I think it was that was the first time we started using the term sustainability. What do we need to do to sustain our city for the long run? Well, clearly so. I, I think back just before we leave those natural disasters. In a way, while we had planned for emergency management, it was the first real big test of it. And with the ice storm in February, in some ways that I think made us very conscious of, of not necessarily shortcomings, but of the enormity of what happens when something like that hits the community and when the tornado occurred, then it was not as if we had practiced because they were two very different things. But nevertheless, we were positioned well to then deal with it. But as you say, there were, there were a whole lot of other things going on. Um, it's hard to remember what was here and what wasn't here yet. I think of the construction of Saddle Creek right. was just then occurring, the Walmart, uh, was coming out of the ground. The first hotel up at Wolf River Boulevard, all of that was happening, which was new not only on the streetscape, but just for the experience of having that kind of retail and uh, hosting ability in the city was, was new for us as well. I agree, and, and it, it began to show us that if we were going to thrive as a community, we needed to do additional things beyond just focus on the residential side, though very important that we knew that, that this retail and this new form of tax base needed to be present and needed to be healthy if we were going to move forward long term. Yeah. I think some of the things that we did as city government, uh, that was when we created the Economic Development Commission, saying we no longer are, have the luxury of just letting it happen in Germantown. We need to be thinking about how to shape it and form it to suit us. The other thing that I think falls in with what you were saying, the first fiscal impact study, really taking a look at if we keep on doing things in Germantown the way we've done them, what is the outcome for the long term? And that clearly goes to sustainability. Uh, the board put a lot on the city's plate right. in that period of time. And in some ways it's like we, we've never gotten away from the table. That is the projects and the programs just keep on coming. What are some of the things that that you recall especially um, in terms of projects that we 
then dealt with? Well, I remember making the decision to complete the Performing Arts Center mm -hmm. in terms of projects. We had this wonderful, uh, was to, at the time it was called the Germantown Center, now known as the Germantown Athletic Club, but we had a shell for the Performing Arts Center. And the board at that time and the mayor made the decision that we were going to complete the interior. So having that in place and then trying to figure out what is going to take place in this wonderful 854 seat acoustically perfect uh, <laughs> performance hall uh, that would attract uh, the, the type of entertainment and folks to our community to appreciate that. So that sticks out in my mind as well as the, um, the completion, and or not the completion, but beginning the design work on the library and then um, additional ball field work. And then as the years roll by, because we're talking 20 years, and there have been a lot of things come out of the ground to be finished, and then we figured out how to make everything work. Uh, even things like the addition to the, to the what is now the athletic club, the Great Hall, mm -hmm. expanding the fitness center, uh, the expansion of the parks, completing the Bob Haley complex, and the Greenway, really moving the Greenway from a wonderful plan into something that became uh, a favorite place for people to be. Um, and I think on the commercial side, we also began to see the development and, and what it is today of the Forest Hill Irene, uh, what we call the triangle. You know, there wasn't a whole lot except gas station out there 20 plus years ago. This, that new retail was so important for our success, Mayor. And one thing I will point out also is um, no one likes to do property tax increases, but we had a tax increase at that point in time. But what we were able to demonstrate to the community in, in 1994 was this is what we're going to do with those tax dollars. We are going to move the city forward, economic development, advancing the infrastructure, and here are some real brick and mortar projects that will make a difference in our community from the, uh, from the GPAC completion to the library. Um, every time we've gone to the community and requested additional funding, we've always been able to tie it to things that add value to the city. Well, and I think one of the things, while we were doing those things that we thought were specific and, and what the city should be doing, we were also seeing the emergency of the medical community, and certainly that was private in the sense that it wasn't public projects. Nevertheless, the city was doing things to welcome the medical community, and we both can remember when Germantown Methodist Hospital, the, the original, was a very limited facility and we have now been through three major expansions over the years so the the landscape of the city the the horizon of the city has really really changed uh, most of our conversation has dwelt on bricks and mortar but the board of mayor and aldermen and the staff and our citizen commissioners were also working on other initiatives we'll talk about those when we return much good day for me would be people leaving their hands off of me. I'm always called names. Um, everywhere that I go, there's always someone um, calling me names, calling me gay. I've been choked, thrown up against the wall, punched. Nobody's ever tried to help me. I think someone at my friend's school has this thing called autism. My friend's brother's son has autism. My neighbor's son has autism. My son has autism. Autism is getting closer to home. Today, one in 68 children is diagnosed with autism. That's about a 30% increase in two years. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Welcome back to our impressions and reflections about Germantown over the past 20 years. City Administrator Patrick Lawton and I are recalling significant milestones or achievements during that period. Patrick, we've mentioned some of the major capital investments the city has made. They've added immeasurably to the quality of life and the evolution of our town from a bedroom suburb to a true urban center. Nevertheless, they're only part of what's happened here. 
uh, we've actually made a major shift in how we look at what Germantown is doing and what it's becoming. Mm -hmm. Correct, in terms of um, planning, long range planning, Mayor, we've always done a, a, a wonderful job in focusing on the future and what needs to take place, never losing sight of of being um, wonderful financial stewards of the tax dollars that we've been entrusted. During this period of time, the city also was able to maintain its AAA bond rating uh, with both, we had it with Moody's, and then achieved it, as I recall, in 94 with the library work and with the GPAC wow. expansion, the, the rating upgrade with Standard & Poor's. But always keeping our eye focused on building this sustainable Germantown for the future. I think in 92, when the board was formed after the election, that was when we first really began looking at, this works great in the moment, but for the long term, what happens when Germantown no longer can expand geographically? Because that historically is how cities have managed to continue financing city services. You just keep growing your tax base by, by spreading out annexation. And we knew that that was going to be finite. So that was the period in which we really began to look at how do you make it work for the long term. Um, talk about some of those things that we have done to assure susten sustainability. Sustainability, yes. Well, we, we identified you know, what we call the triple bottom line, mm -hmm. our environmental and social and financial sustainability model. But, but tied to that, we started to look at specific key performance indicators. What does that look like? If we say we're going to be sustainable from a social standpoint, what does that look like? And then how do we, as the mayor and the board and city administration, develop key performance measures to keep us on track to make sure that we don't, that we don't deviate from our plan? We look at the vision of our community as the desired place in the future, but we back that up with concrete performance measures tied to key performance indicators to let us know that you know, our, our crime rate and our property values and our bond rating and all those things that are important for us to, to understand how we're growing and that we are reaching our goals are in place. I, we're now at 2015 and we've seen the fruits and many of the strategies and ideas that were grounded in are playing off of Vision 2020. And Vision 2020 was really a grassroots up imagining of the city of, as what we wanted in 2020. And out of that came, as you say, our awareness of the triple bottom line. Right. The need to be doing those things, but the specific strategies and one that often comes to mind because we are now beginning to see the fruits of it. And that has to do with smart growth. Um, Germantown always did what we called uh, lateral or horizontal expansion. And now we're looking at a prospect of more vertical expansion and that's the investment in properties, especially redevelopment, that brings greater value to the tax base. Something very new for our community, and, and I believe at the time when it came out of this citizen-driven initiative, as you mentioned, we talked about redevelopment of the heart of Germantown. Little did we know that we were embracing the principles of new urbanism and, and greater densities and mixed use. And, as a local government, we were the enabling body. We created the legislation for that to take place. Unfortunately, we hit the Great Recession in 08, and things sort of came to a halt. But now, because of that pre-planning, because we had the plan and the code and those things in place now, and the type of community that we've, we've grown into, we are very, very attractive for the development community to come in and look at what Germantown has to offer in terms of planning and infrastructure. Those things are in place. Uh, it's sort of like if you build it, they will come. We've got the road infrastructure. We have the water and the sewer and utility infrastructure. We have the basic city services, beyond basic city services in place to attract that level of new investment. And you see it coming up all around the city. I think there were many milestones that we achieved. but. A couple of things did turn out a little bit differently. We went after Aintree subdivision, mm -hmm. and we were successful in negotiating with the city of Memphis for that. And then very importantly, out of chapter 1101, the Toy Town legislation, we picked up two more square miles, which has given us an area south of Winchester for non-residential development. And those things then fed in and really enabled us to uh, move a little bit uh, to a better position in terms of tax base, but then 
the ideas out of smart growth have really played particularly on the Winchester area, but on existing shopping centers as well. But I think if we were to identify one thing that really is going to uh, set the course for sustainability in Germantown and how attractive we are as a community, it has to be the municipal school district. Yes. That, that was something that we'd worked for years and years and years and years, but I don't think anybody was terribly optimistic about making it happen. And then there were things that occurred at the state level that suddenly made that possible. And, and that really makes us desirable, not only for families, but for companies who understand the value of having a place where people can live and work as well. I remember our early visits in looking at the school districts. Um, what we heard from those communities in East Tennessee was the economic driver in their community is having their own local school district. Um, and we see that as such a plus for our community and we're off and running now this first year. Well, we're very excited about it. Uh, first and foremost, for what we can do in terms of local control over public education. And such. Uh, the top, middle, and bottom line to all that we've talked about really comes down to how well the city has served the people who do live here, work, play, and visit here. And, and what we've seen and heard um, as city personnel, elected officials, and citizens work together. We'll talk more about that when we come back. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. This new dad is picturing a tree house in the sky, but, but he's, he's ignoring, ignoring the instructions. instructions. Good luck, big guy. His kids know that he's building without a clue. Never been so good with nails and glue. Now we're trapped inside a box. I hope mom knows what to do. See, you don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. You are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. In the end, public service is all about meeting or hopefully exceeding the needs of the people in the, our community. Aside from some of the things that we've mentioned, uh, fitness and recreational opportunities, we haven't really talked, but we've certainly uh, seen changes in safety and, and fire and security and all of those kinds of things. There are all those other indicators of how people have benefited from city government, I believe. And let's talk for a few minutes about especially programming, some of which has been enabled by bricks and mortar or by other factors. but. In the end, it really comes down to, to going out to find out what people need and expect and, and fulfilling those needs as appropriate for city government to do. Um, Mary, and I think um, I'll give you and your administration a lot of credit for that. The way we've expanded what we now call citizen engagement, how we involve the community in helping us make decisions. And we were talking to break about the value of that 2020 steering committee, all citizen based. Yes. So Germantown has had a reputation for listening to its residents, involving them in surveys. What's important to you? What can we improve upon? What do you like? What can we change? What can we add to? And then the boards and commissions, the expansion of the, of the number of boards and commissions focusing on very specific areas that they can take back to their neighborhoods and, um, and get feedback on. Um, for example, one is, the, is driver safety and the Alive at 25 right. program would not be here had it not been for that citizen-based Public right. Safety Education Commission. I believe it was a group that looked at it initially. Um, and we were talking about what can we do to reduce the number of uh, teenage fatalities in our city. Mm -hmm. And a, an extremely successful program and a model, I think, for the rest of the country. It, it really was. And 
And of all the things I think that's happened over the last 20 years, the one for me that has been most impactful was that reduction in the number of lives lost. Any, any loss of life is tragic. Uh, but we had gone through a period in Germantown in which it, it, it seemed almost epidemic, even though that's certainly not an appropriate term. But you put citizens around a table and the ideas came up and, and we moved forward then with Live at 25 and at the same time working at the state level for graduated driver's licensing. Mm -hmm. And the combination has meant that it's much safer for our teen drivers to be out there. But there are so many other things that I think sometimes affecting a smaller number of people but nevertheless looming rather large in their lives. One is that we, I think, have changed or have, we've turned our attention towards special needs. Especially with young people, we saw a gap in social opportunities for young people who are mentally or physically challenged and we've stepped up with a really fine recreational program for that purpose. We created some universal playgrounds, meaning again, uh, children with their parents can enjoy playground equipment. And again, that's looking out and understanding that serving a community is not just taking a one size fits all, but it does mean drilling down sometimes to doing those things that people are not able to do for themselves. Well, it's a good example, again, of, of working with our commissions, our Parks and Recreation Commission and city staff and the ultimate liaison, recognizing that parks and recreation and leisure, op leisure opportunities are more than, than baseball fields and soccer fields and basketball courts. There is a whole array of things that we can do to create a healthy community and a healthy lifestyle within our city, whether it's the Greenway, whether it's expansion into different sports, lacrosse and disc golf, the special needs programs that you talked about, the work we've done on the playground, really um, being as inclusive as we possibly can for everybody in the community and recognizing their programming and, and leisure needs. Um, amazing attraction for our community when people come to, to live or to visit and then lived in Germantown. Yeah. At the top of the show, we mentioned GPAC and how the board in 1993 or so decided to finish it and none of us really had an understanding of what was going to happen there. Fortunately, we employed a director who had a vision beyond anything that we would have thought about. And as a result of that, world-class artists have come to Germantown. They have come to our doorstep and we have enjoyed the very finest in performance art over all of those years. But it's been more than just a theater where people come. Uh, I think of the development of Iris, mm -hmm. which was uh, kind of born out of the city's decision to help bankroll that in the very beginning. And we have 15 years later uh, a superlative, uh, well, I guess that may be not quite the right word, <laughs> but you only speak in superlatives <laughs> about Iris. Uh, in terms of being an extraordinary and very unique orchestra, but also playing off of GPAC, then we have the whole Germantown Youth Symphony. And that was one of the things that we had thought was kind of lacking in Germantown. So we have the Youth Symphony out of GPAC. Now in the new, muni in the new municipal school district, we have strings instruction for young people expanding. And I don't think you or I can sit here and imagine the difference that, that those things have made and will make for decades to come in people's lives. You're exactly right, Mayor, and, and who'd have thought when we were working on GPAC and, and that the school system would form and that oh. these things would be sort of on a collision course of, of greatness <laughs> and, and that's what's happened. To think, to think in, in, in a five or ten minute drive, if you live in Germantown, that you could go to the Performing Arts Center and and meet and greet the likes of a Mikhail Baryshnikov or a Yo-Yo Ma or Ray Charles when he came here or Judy Collins. I mean, we can go on and on and on. I mean, the list is amazing. And in that type of intimate setting, an 854 seat acoustically perfect theater, to see that level of world-class performance is, is uh, indescribable. Yeah. I think there's one other place in the community where astounding things happen when we agreed to build the library because we would simply run out of space at the very small library we had. And we worked with Shelby County government mm -hmm. to get the money together. And then we began uh, in a wonderful new building, 30,000 square feet seemed like it was just 
huge. <laughs> okay. And very quickly over a period of years, we began to understand that there was opportunity for more dynamic programming and collection and everything. And again, not by something that we uh, provoked, but simply came our way when Shelby County government decided no, to no longer help fund the library. Uh, it was suddenly ours. And the decisions that we made to use professional management now has led to uh, an enormous increase in collection with the city, contributing the money, sure. running it, and everything. But the programming that occurs out of the library, again, that's something I, I certainly did not imagine at the very beginning. I think when people talk about what is the future of libraries, and in fact, we had this discussion about expanding the library mm -hmm. and, and pulled back a little bit. But, um, you know, the, the, the decision to bring in LSSI to manage the library, clearly the right decision. They came in with a different uh, model and mindset on what libraries could be. And that programming that you see when people question, well, do you need all these books? Do you need this? The programming that takes place, the families and the children and the, inter and the interaction is the future of libraries. Well, it, it's obviously impossible to remember everything that we would consider significant. We could easily sit here for a couple of hours, several hours, to reminisce, especially about the people who were an integral part of shaping and causing Germantown to become what it is today. Patrick, thank you not only for recounting the city's course with me, but for the partnership you and I have enjoyed in city government administration. It's been a pleasure to serve this community for 20 years, two decades, and I now look forward to continuing as a resident of Germantown, but pursuing those things that I find near and dear to my heart.